Hello, doctors again. Uh, welcome back to a new uh, guideline video. Uh, sorry for the big gap um, between uh, each video and video. Uh, I will try uh, to um, collect uh, all the important guidelines in this channel. Uh, so that will be a very nice reference to revise quickly your guideline uh, that you needed in your exam. Uh, okay, today uh, we want to um, read the cervical lymphadenopathy guideline from the new pediatric guideline book, which is the game book. Uh, UK guideline, it's very important as um, uh, you may face um, a lymphoma or leukemia or a cervical lymph node video in your video station. Um, it may come uh, can come up as a history as well. So um, you need to know uh, the guideline um, um, uh, very well. Okay, let's start with the definition. So uh, when I can recognize the, uh, the there is some lymph nodes or lymphadenopathy in uh, any child, um, it's very simple. It's, it's basically enlargement of the cervical lymph nodes or any, no, or any nodes in his body uh, that may uh, lead you there's something wrong going uh, with him. So the main, the main symptom that they come up with, uh, it's the enlargement of cervical lymph nodes. This is the very obvious lumps you can spot in your general examination and in your inspection. You, you did not touch the patient yet. So uh, cervical lymph nodes, very, very important. When you find it like more than two centimeter, okay, that's, you can say it's a, um, it's a lymphadenopathy, it's um, a pathological enlargement. Okay, so we have the acute, subacute and chronic lymphadenopathy. Acute lymphad lymphadenitis, um, it's short term history, usually less than two weeks. Uh, enlarged node with features of acute inflammation. So the duration, it, it, it would be less than two weeks. Subacute lymphadenopathy, um, it depends on the history, uh, usually non-tender, but with overlying erythema. Uh, Subacute, it's not symptomatic. Chronic lymphadenopathy, it's longer history, usually more than six weeks, no features of acute inflammation and non-tender. Uh, so the points that we have to focus on the history in here, that's the onset of symptoms, whether following a burst battle tract infection, tonsillitis, uh, we have to ask about the duration, the progression, fever, weight loss, night sweats, eczema or skin infection around. So, so you can think about it's maybe secondary bacteria infection of the eczema and make this lymph nodes to, get, to go big. Uh, bruises, uh, pallor, bone pain, and pruritus. Okay, so the social history, you, we have to um, ask about any contact with TB or cats, uh, whether they have cats at, at home, kittens, a history of travel or place uh, of birth, uh, parental origin. Okay, in the examination, uh, you have to focus exactly, you, you will do local and general examination. So local for the cervical lymph nodes, if you have any, you have to um, localize the nodes exactly, the site of the nodes, whether it's anterior triangle, posterior triangle, right, left, cervical, you have to localize it very well when you are prescribing the video or um, you're telling uh, your presentation to the examiner. Uh, size of node as well, uh, ENT examination needed, um, uh, skin, especially if there's any eczema. Um, axilla is very important to have a look on the axilla in your general examination, supraclavicular, suprasternal, uh, and groin for other nodes. Uh, abdomen for hepatosplenomegaly is very, very, very important. And examine tests in boys because leukemia usually um, uh, uh, the metastasis goes to the testis and so uh, you may find a, a large testicle in boys. Okay, uh, differential diagnosis. What's your differential diagnosis in here? 
Uh, it depends whether you have unilateral cervical lymph node or bilateral lymph, uh, lymph nodes, um, whether you have acute or subacute or chronic, all this depends on your differential diagnosis according to your case. So if you have um, acute unilateral, so this could be reactive due to upper spot duct infection, strep pneumonia, skin infection, group A strep or staph, dental infection, for example, if he has dental cures, cavities in his teeth, and he has cervical lymph node enlarged, you have to be very reasonable in here. Um, Kawasaki as well is very, very important differential. Cat scratch disease, partonella, um, uh, it's going to be tender uh, and axillary lymph node is very important. You have to look on the axilla if there's any bumps or lumps over there. Um, something called Kikushi Fujimoto disease. Um, it's a histiocytic necrotizing lymph, lymph, uh, lymphadenitis. Okay, that's, uh, that's the acute unilateral. Uh, the acute bilateral, uh, again, reactive uh, um, due to viral or uh, upper respiratory infection. A Epstein-Barr virus um, will, will, will cause a bilateral cervical lymphadenopathy, cytomegalovirus, generalized lymph nodes, uh, and hepatomegaly uh, as well. Subacute... Uh, in form of non tuberculous mycobacterium infection uh, is very common in, in ages less than five years. Um, it's going to be unilateral and uh, non tender purple. The overlying skin is um, discolored purple. And the patient systemically well, he's doing well, he's playing around, he is, he's doing fine, but he has only this unilateral lump. Uh, non tender, it's bearable, so you have to think about the non tuberculous mycobacterial infection. Uh, the TB, history of contact uh, or foreign travel, um, it may present with unilateral um, cervical, uh, um, cervical lymph node, toxoplasma gondii, um, generalized lymphadenopathy, fatigue, and myalgia. Okay, uh, the chronic cervical lymphadenopathy, again, reactive. Um, uh, as long as it's a chronic more than six weeks, so you have to think about malignancy as well. Lymphoma, leukemia, soft tissue tumors, GIA, uh, systemic onset, uh, GIA associated with organomegaly and rash and fever. So you have to put all this in mind. SLE as well. Uh, what's your urgent investigations in here? If any of the following are noted uh, about the nodes, it, uh, the nodes lymph node itself, you have to do urgent investigation in here. If you have got supraclavicular or suprasternal diagnostic of, of significant pathology, so you will have to do urgent investigation in here. It's alarming. Um, more than two centimeters at four to six weeks duration, uh, growing in size for two weeks or more, um, not returned to baseline less than one centimeter at eight to 12 weeks, all these uh, indications for urgent investigation. Okay, um, what's the signs and symptoms in here? Um, you, ca you may find a bit of berbora, respiratory compromisation, uh, dysphagia, hepatosublinomegaly, also need to exclude Epstein-Barr virus in here is very important. Weight loss, night sweats, uh, you think of TB malignancy, um, which need early investigation, persistent fever for more than two weeks. Uh, okay, so what's investigation needed in here? Um, to be done urgently, uh, you have to do full blood count, film, uh, ESR, CRB, uh, chest x ray, uh, ultrasound scan. LDH, liver function test, serology for toxoplasma, CMV and EBV, uh, CT only if suspected deep next based infection. Uh, and you, uh, of course, you have to discuss with the ENT for biopsy. Okay, for chest x ray, it's very crucial to uh, request chest x ray in here um, for hyalur lymphadenopathy on chest x ray, refer for biopsy of suitable node. 
um, higher lymphadenopathy significantly increases uh, likelihood of neoplastic disease. Uh, the ultrasound scan also important. Um, it has a high sensitivity and specificity for abscess formation in acute lymphadenitis. Value in chronic lymphadenopathy for assessing the size, architecture, and vascularity of the uh, tumor or the lymph node. Uh, the LDH of a limited diagnostic value not to be done routinely. Uh, liver function test only if suspected viral infection. Serology of toxoplasma, uh, as we have mentioned before. CT if there's a uh, deep space um, uh, neck uh, in the neck um, uh, uh, neck space infection um, and don't forget to involve the ENT for biopsy as well. Okay, what's the indications for surgical excision biopsy in here? Um, if you have got atypical uh, uh, myobacterial infection in your differential, um, you have to do surgical excision biopsy. Uh, other features highly suggestive of neoplasm, um, for example, as we have mentioned before, lymph nodes more than two centimeters in diameter, um, uh, also braclavicular and suprasternal nodes, constitutional symptoms, hepatosplenomegaly, generalized lymph, uh, lymphadenopathy, abnormal ar uh, architecture on ultrasound scan, all these indications to, uh, to refer for surgical excision biopsy. Um, so once you have decided with your team, uh, with your consultant, you are going to refer for biopsy. So children undergoing surgical biopsy for suspected neoplastic disease, they should have some investigations done beforehand. Uh, full blood count and film, urea and electrolytes, uric acid, uh, NFTs, and chest x-ray. So the last two pages of this guideline, it's basically uh, summarizing the uh, algorithm. It's very nice and cozy. It's straightforward uh, for the acute and chronic cervical lymphadenopathy. Let's start with the acute cervical lymph uh, lymphadenopathy first. So first you will have, uh, you will take history and do your examination. Um, if you have find that there is a local infection um, uh, it's ENT issue, skin or eye infection. If yes, you will treat with appropriate antibiotic and that's it. Um, if no, there's no local infection or anything, um, the patient systematically uh, will uh, and the nodes will stand two centimeter. If yes, no treatment, uh, GB to review in two weeks time. Uh, if the patient non-systematically will and the nodes, the nodes uh, and, uh, more than two centimeter, um, um, for example, you are thinking of Kawasaki disease, um, uh, the patient has fever, single uh, node more than one and a half centimeter, rash, peeling skin, red eyes, red lips and tongue. Yes, so you will follow the Kawasaki guidelines. Um, and uh, we, um, we have read the Kawasaki guidelines in previous videos, so uh, just check the playlist on, uh, on this channel um, to, to revise the Kawasaki um, guidelines as well. Uh, if it wasn't Kawasaki disease, um, but the lymph nodes basically hot, red, tender, sore throat or immunocompromised. Uh, if yes, um, and the lymph nodes fluctuate, you do the fluctuation test and you find that it's fluctuant. If yes, um, you go for ultrasound scan to confirm its abscess uh, in there. If there's a pass, you refer to ENT for evacuation. Um, okay, if the lymph nodes, um, um, uh, if the lymph nodes not hot or red, there's no any signs of inflammation over there. You have to do a full blood count, your electrolyte, LFT, CRB, as we have mentioned before, it's just summarization in here, blood cultures, throat swab. Uh, don't forget the serology for Epstein Barr virus, CMV, toxoplasma, uh, as you are thinking of other differential. Okay, so in here, if you if there if there is not any fluctuation in the lymph node, it's not abscess in there. 
um, you have to start go a music club orally for 48 hours while they are hot and tender and red and uh, their sore throat. Um, so it's, it's, it's probably due to um, an infection going around in the throat. So and it's not flectu uh, it's not fluctuant lymph nodes in here. So it's basically due to sore throat. It's very simple um, uh, as that. So you will start Qua Music Lab orally for 48 hours. Uh, if he improved, um, yes, continue Qua Music Lab for up to 10 days. If he is not improving, um, you have to do ultrasound scan. Um, if you found pus, refer to ENT. If it was a solid and clinical suspicion of atypical mycobacterium, um, you will refer to the ENT as well, whether it's pus or solid. Uh, um, and you are thinking of atypical mycobacterium, both of them will be referred to the ANT. Uh, if it wasn't atypical mycobacterium, so you will go to the algorithm of chronic cervical lymphadenopathy, probably it will take long time to resolve. So chronic cervical lymphadenopathy, we, as we have mentioned before, it's um, uh, taking um, more than six weeks, it's versus lymph nodes more than six weeks. That's uh, the chronic cervical lymph node. After taking history and examination, um, cervical glands more than six weeks. Uh, uh, it could be innocent one. It could be innocent one. Um, if uh, less than one centimeter and mobile and the child is doing well, he is not ill. Um, on the other hand, however, we have red flags in here to think of um, if you got any fever, uh, more than one half centimeter, as we mentioned before, rash, peeling skin, red eyes, red lips, and tongue. Uh, you have to do a chest X-ray, an ultrasound scan, full blood count, urethrolyte, LDH, uric acid, and refer to NT for urgent surgical biopsy. Okay. Um, uh, okay, so what the investigation we have to do in here, it's again the same as we have mentioned before, just X-ray, also scan neck, uh, full blood count and film, serology, EBG, CMV, HIV, toxoplasma, co amoxiglab for two weeks. Um, you will start as well with all these investigations, the antibiotic, uh, and then you will review with the results at two weeks as well. Uh, if EBV negative and clinical suspicion, um, retest again. If he improved or uh, positive serology, uh, if he improved, you will discharge him. If he is not improving, uh, refer to the ENT for urgent surgical biopsy. Um, and this is uh, the end of our video today for the cervical lymphadenopathy guideline. I wish doctors you enjoy this video and um, please do um, uh, comment below for me um, if you have any requests. If you have specific uh, guideline you, you, you want uh, me to, um, to read it together, um, uh, that's fine. Just um, uh, let me know uh, and you have any a new um, any change uh, about or any update, update about any guideline please uh, do let me know um, and thank you um, uh, for watching and I wish you the best for your uh, coming exams.